On today's show, VW is in talks with the EPA to buy back thousands of vehicles. The Transportation Department says there are no plans to regulate autonomous cars nationally, and BMW reveals next-gen technology for its motorcycles. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily for January 8th of 2016. Earlier in the week, the U.S. Justice Department filed a lawsuit against Volkswagen over its diesel emission cheating scandal. And now it's being reported that the company is in talks with the EPA to buy back thousands of cars in the U.S. equipped with the cheating software because there's not an easy fix for them here in the States. According to Bloomberg, it could be as many as 50,000 vehicles, but that number could change. The two sides are still negotiating, but no decisions have been reached. While most major automakers are all in when it comes to autonomous technology, this is something they don't want to hear. The head of the Transportation Department, Anthony Fox, says the government does not have any plans to regulate self-driving cars on a national level. The Detroit News reports that the Transportation Secretary believes autonomous vehicle regulation is better off left to the states. He did say that could change in the future, but at the moment the department is focused on accelerating the time it takes to evaluate the technology. This is a nightmare scenario for automakers because they would rather have one standard nationally instead of potentially having to meet 50 different regulations. And in other autonomous news, Renault-Nissan announced it will launch more than 10 vehicles with semi-autonomous technology over the next four years. This year, It will debut its single lane control feature, which will allow the car to drive itself on the highway. In 2018, it will offer multiple lane control for the highway, which allows the car to change lanes or avoid hazards. And in 2020, the company will have vehicles that are capable of driving in urban areas by themselves. Renault-Nissan did not reveal which vehicles will offer the technology, but it did say they will be available in the U.S., Europe, Japan and China. Still to come, Hyundai reveals more info about its new electrified vehicle. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion, and by Dow Automotive Systems, breakthrough technologies for lightweight vehicles. We've taken a look at Hyundai's new Ionic recently. You know the car that will fit a hybrid, plug-in hybrid, or electric powertrain into one single body type? Well, now we're getting some more information about the car and its hybrid setup. The chassis will consist of 53% high-strength steel and place aluminum in key areas like the hood, tailgate, and some suspension components. Speaking of the suspension, it will feature a multi-link setup in the rear. Now let's move under the hood, where the Ionic Hybrid has a new 103 horsepower, 1.6 liter Atkinson Cycle gasoline direct injected engine that's mated to a 6-speed dual clutch transmission. It also features a 34 kilowatt electric motor and lithium ion polymer battery. With this setup, Hyundai says the Ionic will achieve class leading fuel economy. You know, safety is one of the hottest topics in the automotive industry right now. But it's not just all about cars. BMW had two new concepts to show off at the Consumer Electronics Show for its motorcycles. The first is a laser light that was derived from a design for its four-wheeled friends. You know the saying, see and be seen? Well, the high beam of a laser light can cast a beam out twice the length of a conventional headlight which would make riding at night much more safe. While BMW is currently testing the light, at the moment it's too costly for the use in motorcycles. The second technology is a retrofittable head-up display for helmets. The screen can be programmed to display a host of various readouts, like traffic or bike information, and even navigation route. In the future, when vehicle-to-vehicle communication is possible, it would be able to display important information in real time. BMW says it hopes to have the head-up display ready for production in the next few years. And speaking of BMW and CES, we got a chance to talk to the head of product planning and strategy all about the automaker's air touch technology at the show. So if you'd like to see that interview or the rest of what we covered, 
You can check it out on our website or YouTube channel right now. Coming up next, a look at why the new Volt and Prius did not make the cut for the North American Car of the Year Award. For the people at Dow, racing is a sport and a science. We enjoy one and learn from the other. But like most competitive people, we like winning at both. This is the human element at work, Dow. There's more car news and industry insight from the AutoLine Network every day. Take a moment to click that subscribe button. You'll never miss another AutoLine episode. The Honda Civic, Chevy Malibu, and Mazda MX-5 Miata are the finalists for the North American Car of the Year Award. On AutoLine this week, John and three of his Nactoy colleagues discuss the finalists and why they're in the running for Car of the Year. In the following clip, they talk about why the Civic was able to make it to the final three over the new Chevy Volt and Toyota Prius. Well, one of the things that they say is look at cars that move the segment forward. And I think that this certainly does that. And uh, this is a segment that's really come on in recent years with very good uh, cars uh, going back to the, the, when the Cruze was introduced. And that's when the, the Honda fell behind and now it's pushed back up to the front. Of course, the, the Volt, all new redesign, same with the Prius. I, I was surprised that the Volt, one of those two didn't make the list, honestly. Um, uh, maybe they split the green vote. But if, if we go back to the Civic, yeah, the Civic, it, it jumps to the front or, you know, at the front of its segment, it really moves it forward. And if there's any knock against the Prius and the Volt, it's that they're, they're just evolutions. I, I think what they do is amazing and the numbers they achieve now. But in a sense, maybe we're, we're, we're numb to it or, you know, we're, we're just like, well, it's a Volt that goes further. It's, it's, it's much more than that. But, you know, maybe that was the sort of, uh, that's what dismissed it off the list. Well, and, and in terms of significance, you can't forget the fact that they're going to sell between 350,000 and 400,000 of them a year. So of that, the Civic. Of, of the Civic. So, I mean, that makes a Civic that had been on a downward you know, uh, direction turning around and all of a sudden becoming a leader once again, a very significant car, I think. That's a great point. Civic will outsell Prius and Volt combined. So its significance to the market is, is pretty significant. So who do they think will end up winning the award next week? Just head on over to Autoline.tv to watch the entire discussion right now. But that brings us to the end of today's Autoline Daily. Thank you for watching. Have a great weekend.